It may appear in some instances that faith is something that we um, that we sort of control or manifest. Uh, the woman says, uh, if I but touch the clothes, I shall be cured. <clears throat> and that her uh, sort of manifesting this will is what is what makes us effective. I will do this. So that, that's, that's misunderstood often as faith, this sort of human will. And it makes it difficult for us to understand the great gift that faith is when we think that faith is just something that I just, I just white knuckle. If I just believe enough, if I, if I, 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 I. And we see that this is not the case at all because there were so many in Jesus' party here who were doubting that this child would rise, and yet Jesus raised her from the dead. Faith is a gift, and so far from, or rather than us manifesting it and sort of pushing it into the universe as so many Eastern sort of ideas have, we receive faith. Our, our response, or rather our, our prerequisite to faith, is, is not a white knuckling or a bearing down on our will. What we want, Lord, I'm going to have faith that you're going to do what I want. But instead, it's an openness and a disposition that I will conform to what God wants. I hope, perhaps, that God wants me to be healed. But I feel compelled to reach out and touch his garment in the hope that he will save me. And so when he turns and says to the woman, your faith has saved you, don't hear him say, your will has saved you. You wanted it badly enough that it, that it happened for you. Only God's will manifests. Only God's will creates. Only God's will orders and reorders. What we call faith is a disposition to be led and responsive to the will of God, not our own will. It was the will of God that all men might be saved. That doesn't mean that if I will it enough, I will be saved. But rather, if I respond appropriately to the will of God, that every single person, has, he, has, he has a desire for every single person to, to be saved, that any single person can respond in an openness to God's will and therefore be saved because God wills it. Not because we want it. Not because we made it happen by some magic power that we possess that we call faith. Again, when people misquote or misuse that, that line, walk by faith, not by sight, there's this, there's this idea that, that, that a, a person has is, is got some, you know, I don't know, magic power that allows them to, to make it through life, make it through the minefield, you know, un, unimpeded. But to say I walk by faith is not by sight, is to say I judge things according to God's will and not by what I see. Even though what I see is real, even though my sight really works, it is, it is, it's faulty, it's, it's, it's weak. It does not perceive the depths of the meaning of reality. Therefore, by faith, that is to say, an openness to God's providence of God's will, I will make my decisions. I will walk this walk. I will journey this life. This actually is more amazing than the misconception of faith that so many people use. The, the, what's, what's more amazing about it is that we receive... in a way in which we kind of get credit for cooperation with the will, not of our, of our own will, but the will of God. That through the gift of faith, that if we dispose ourselves to receive from God the gift of faith, what he has done for us then is allow us to unite ourselves with his will, which does create, which does reorder, which does uh, manifest good. And so while the credit is not our own, we nevertheless share in it. 
we, we, we merit by proxy. This is the difference between, you know, Jesus as the natural son of the Father and we as the adopted sons of the Father. We're all divine because of it, but he's divine properly by nature. We're divine by gift of grace. I, I, I bring this up it, not to try to confuse anybody or wow anybody with these, these subtleties that seem to be a difference without a distinction, but because there is a really profound and meaningful difference in the way that the world uses the word, the word faith, the way Protestants use it, the way secular Americans use it, the way atheists may use it, and the way that the church proposes it. Faith is not a power that we possess, but rather it is a union of will that comes from a disposition of humility. To say, I need and do not have. The Lord has and wishes to give. Here I am, Lord. Give me according to your will. That's faith. And that's the power. That's the thing that has the power to save. I need salvation, Lord, and do not have it. You have salvation, Lord, and wish to give it. Give it to me as you see fit. Give it to me as you know I need to receive it. Now that's the highest prayer of faith that we can make. But there are other lower, more menial, if you will, words of faith. Lord, I need to know what is good for me to do today, and I don't know it. You do. And you will that I know it, because you will my good, and for me to cooperate with you in bringing good to others. Inform me, therefore, Lord, according to your will, according to your mode, that in that gift of faith that you have given me, I might act according to your providence. That's how all the good that Christians do come into the world. Not by our own willing it, but by our simple, humble response to God willing it and allowing ourselves to become the agent of his agency. Agency. 